evening and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to new worlds with floral designers Darnay Erfia and Chris Willemser, growing their bottom line from their own modern farmhouse. New art forms take shape from glass made of ancient African sand and the artistry of David Reed. Reggie Kaba reinterprets traditional Zulu footwear for the now generation. An old Swatland grain silo turned new getaway has Jack Parrow all inspired to finish his latest album. Gail Motsopa shares what a home loan means to a couple building a new family life. Between platinum awards and a new album, rapper Kid X and his wife Dudu Tile only have eyes for their daughter. And spot the clues in the show to stand a chance of winning a top-of-the-range energy-saving washing machine by answering the weekly show-related question on our social media pages. Rapper Bongi Nkosi Kid X Matlangu. The man's personal life has been kept on the down low as long as we've known him, until he wed model Dudu Zile Dudu Tile, and they had their first child in February. A new, more open side to the artist has emerged along with a fresh album. So he and Dudu took a staycation in their hometown to tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, so we met in 2014. She spoke about wanting to book me for something. So she wanted my details and I thought, huh, <laughs> pretty slick, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I was a liaison and I needed to book him as an artist. So then that's, <laughs> as I said, there's this nice history. Story. <laughs> <laughs> there was a good energy about just our communication and how fluid it was. I think that genuinely became what formed our relationship. So the wedding part, the two cultures coming together. So him being Debele and me being a Zulu bride, I came in my Zulu attire and he came in his Ndebele attire and they had to mbesa me, which is dress me in their Ndebele attire, which means now I'm officially coming into being a Ndebele wife. It was so beautiful. <laughs> when I looked at her, she also felt like she was ready, but I mean, to be honest, none of us were ready, but it's, it's all about taking a leap of faith and that's what we managed to do. Parenthood has been another leap of faith that's brought such rewards. Becoming mother and father to their daughter Zen in the midst of this pandemic gave them a whole lot of time for perspective. Uh, being a first time parent has been amazing. It's never quite what you expect it to be. It's everything and more. It's very fulfilling. You learn so much about yourself through this little person that you bring into the world who, even though you might grow frustrated, this person is actually mirroring some of your qualities back to you. For me, I think Zen has taught me so much of patience, like just to be patient, you know, not to rush things, not to take things really to, to heart. She's growing each and every day and the mm. milestones are crazy. We, we're doing well. We're doing mm. well. <laughs> we are. We are. Mm. That said, with family keen to babysit, no book on parenting has rules against a night off, especially if it's at this year's winner of the luxury small hotel of the year. Uh, the Peach is a 32-bedroom boutique hotel. We're based in Melrose, the leafy green suburb in the northern suburbs of Joburg. So we've been open for the best part of 17 years. Um, and we've grown from six rooms up to the current 32 rooms. The gardens are a really central part of, uh, of what we offer at the hotel. We, we're very uh, proud to have two acres of garden and most of it is actually vegetation. Or there's the opportunity to pick up some new skills with chef-in-residence Candice Phillip, who helped make this establishment the fine dining restaurant of the year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and then you guys are gonna plate <laughs> as yeah. well. Okay, so at the bottom here, we're placing the Parmesan cream. I'm just gonna squash it down a little bit. Um, these tomatoes, because we're drying them sort of daily, they take about three or four hours to get ready. It's gone in seconds. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> these are phyllo crispies. You brush it with a little bit of butter. 
and then you um, put it in the oven until they're golden. Um, and then you can use these as a lovely crunch on your dish. Candice has understudied SA chefing legends David Higgs and Luke Dale Roberts. Now, diners come for her recipes. And then I'm going to finish off with this is a basil oil. Okay, so this is my summer tomato salad. And do you think you guys can match that? I can definitely I mean, try. If you, if you keep it there, <laughs> we can try. <laughs> Mimicry is the best form of flattery for real, but Kid X has a record of going his own way. So you're gonna grab these raisin looking like <laughs> tomatoes over here and you're just gonna land them. You're pretty much gonna try and put them as, as artistically as you can manage. There's no, there's no real order you need to follow. I think it's about the end product. Okay, so we've planted a little variety of tomatoes on the plate. At home, I definitely cook maybe four times a week. And mm. Hey! <laughs> I do. I'd be so lucky. <laughs> Chef, we're ready for you. Already. Oh, oh, boy. Do we have a winner? Uh, I mean, they so you need. Don't do it, <laughs> don't do it. It's a tie, it's a tie. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, Chef. We've thoroughly enjoyed this experience. I can't wait to dive in and really just get into this dish. Are you enjoying the meal? Mm-hmm. I definitely am. It's very important to spend time with your partner because time is the only real currency that we have. So, I mean, spending it with your loved ones makes, it, makes sense. It's spending on the ones that you love. In the spirit of the new album, X held a sketch-off for his artistic fans to compete, win prizes and exposure on his Instagram page with original sketches of him and his daughter. The uh, album name was inspired by my role, uh, becoming a father to a lovely young girl who's eight months old. Uh, I think when she was born and we named her Zen, for me, it made sense to actually name my album that because for me that's the most important title that I wear. While Kid X looks ever forward, his fans are still loving the man's back catalogue and while he dined out to lunch, Dudu had a surprise for him. His 2018 track Mtan Umuntu just went platinum and on his birthday too. Wow! Good to see you. <laughs> Amazing! Happy birthday! Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you so much! Yes! Wow! Thank you, South Africa. This means so much to me. Thank you so much. I think it's the perfect way to end this getaway. It's been lovely, and this is just the cherry on top. With 13 banging tracks on the new album to tell us all about it, Kid X. Thanks for sharing, Brur. Coming up, a new take on a Cape farmhouse by guys who know how to grow a business. And traditional Zulu sandals get a 2021 twist from Reggie Haba. Stellenbosch floral designers and entrepreneurs Darnay Arfia and Chris Willemser both grew up on farms with stone floors, high ceilings and chalked walls. For their own home, they imagined a classic Cape farmhouse, but then fell for architect Henry Comrie's more timeless design. Johannesdorf Villa is a modern farmhouse that we have built, my partner and I, Chris, about more or less 10 years ago. It is a modern cubic-like farmhouse that's divided up in smaller cubes inside. The idea is that the house periscopes open towards the magnificent mountains right in front of it. And we furnished it inside with unexpected furniture we didn't go for modern minimalism at all, and we just filled it with the things we love. It has a certain romance and beauty with it that only comes with time. So we are, in the end, extremely happy with what we've achieved here. 
it's that wonderful cliche, bringing the outside in, which we purposefully tried not to do here, but it just happened. But I love my creepers and trees and things on top of the house. You are aware of nature wherever you are inside the house, and that's all you need. Filtered through shutters, creepers and bamboo, natural light patterns change by the hour. The house is full of texture. We've decided to use uh, just a simple white chalky walls that's not plastered, it's just simply bad. And then your wonderful texture that you have on the ceiling. That combined with wood makes for a wonderful combination of brown, white and grey that works well all year round. The house was moved 20 metres due to the high water table, but it's great for the flowers. So this is basically our rose garden. So we use this crop for our weddings and we also sell the excess in our shop Ukasi in Dorp Street in Stellenbosch. So this variety is called Augustus Louise. It's very popular for weddings. It, it has a high yield. So in other words, there's a lot of flowers that you can harvest throughout the growing season. If the Wineland Estates and scenery are the engine of our international wedding economy, then flowers are the fuel. So this is what we call our, our picking garden, where we grow our own foliage and flowers that only flower once a year. We don't always choose the easy route by just ordering flowers from a big importer. We rather make use of local growers in the area. One of these things currently are the Burnham Snowball, which flowers once a year for three weeks of the year only, and this is a magnificent thing to use in our work. Chefs prize a field to fork, ready, fresh supply of seasonal ingredients, and in Chris and Darnay's fresh flower business, it's the same. So this is our warehouse. Welcome to where everything happens. We're currently busy with a wedding for tomorrow and everybody's busy creating these beautiful table arrangements for the wedding. This whole selection of pre-prepared flowers all come from the farm, of course. So the idea is when you do a hand tie bouquet, I think this is the first thing you learn with floristry is to have your stems that swirl. So you start with the main stem, and while swirling or turning, you keep on adding. And then just to make sure that you keep on feeding the bouquet from all sides. So it is always nice to have a good blend of flowers and filler. The flowers being the main thing, of course, but the filler which helps in giving the bunch weight and substance. And then this is then the test. So you jam the bunch. If your bunch is balanced well, it should be able to stand on its own. Turning this balance of practicality and creativity to their love of furniture, the guys have branched out. This is a very exciting part of the business and it's one of the parts that I really enjoy. Working with my friend Martin, who is the upholsterer. This is a typical scenario where you have a lovely old armchair that needs to be redone. And we found this old broken keelum that Martin fixed with a machine. So the idea is that these panels will kind of form the back and the sides and we will combine it with this lovely natural linen for the seat and the arms. So you will get a blend of something old with something new, which is typical of our work and the things we love. Walk a kilometer here in any direction and you bump into a wedding venue. So where better to have a shop? We grew into this business, not being only me and Chris, but also with a team of highly skilled people whom we have trained. Everything 
where we are today started as a simple flower shop in the heart of Stellenbosch a couple of years ago. Selling flowers for us is literally selling emotions every single day. We specialize in local fresh cut flowers. Benefits of getting local fresh cut flowers is they've been grown in your area where you have the same humidity and everything around you. So the, your flowers are lasting longer, you have a more variety of everything that's locally grown around you, nothing's imported and fresh basically from the ground to your pot. Our variety is a little bit more out there, a little bit more eccentric, a little bit weird. So Ukasi is flowers for every occasion and the best kept floral secret out there. Pretty good going for two guys who grew up on farms and have now made such a commercial success from their love of nature. Umlazi-born footwear phenomenon Reggie Chaba is a son of the soil, taking his authentic Zulu culture and making a successful exportable commercial product of it. Hi Insider SA, my name is Reggie Chaba. I'm a footwear designer based in Devon, designer for Ifele sandals. Welcome to my space. His muse is the aesthetic beauty in African culture. I follow a very strict design process, which is part of my training. So it starts from a, quite a lot of research. And even with the culture that I'm familiar with, which is my Zulu culture or African culture by extension, I still need to uh, pick up books, go to the market, you know, look at the historical work that has been done by other people. And, and somewhere, some of the things start to make sense in terms of shapes, the colors. So that becomes the fabric of the beginning of the creation. That's conceptually, that's what I do. Setting the sandal brand apart is the highly handmade element of its production. Welcome to Lighthouse Footwear. This is where everything begins. To his staff, Reggie is a walking, talking university of design. After we've done the sketches and I'm excited about what's going to happen, I have to sit with Zimasa, who is also a designer, a junior designer in, in our case. So he has to uh, work according to my direction. So we put together a full design. So it's the right color, the right trims. And then we make one, which is called the prototype samples and the life of a new style starts there. MZ. We're using e eh? Yes. We start cutting from this side. All the materials, when they come in, it comes straight to our cutting department, and the process starts from here. For Ifele, you know, they have to finish these uppers by hand. You know, they've already been stitched, and they're ready to be created into the traditional Ifele styling. It's a very complicated process. That's what makes us unique. If we're making a thousand or if we're making 200, they all should look the same. But that's why when we say our sandals are handmade, that's what we mean. But sometimes the upper is plain and simple, like this particular style, you know, that are very straightforward, usually for our mass market retail. This is the, our Madala style. It's beautiful, but it does not have all the elements that Ifele style has. So there's just a little bit of stitching that goes in. After hand lacing, the upper is ready to go on the line and meet the sole to create the full shoe. A rich source of ideas is this leather craft market using leather offcuts to create authentic and sustainable Zulu cultural items. The inspiration I get from this market is the, the real expression of the Zulu culture in the urban environment, not in the rural environment. So these things, like the stick I just found today, has got the colors and the geometrics that are beautiful. So we take this and also borrow some of the elements. These are authentic objects which are created by the culture itself. So this is an authentic cultural item. It's not for fashion. But my job is to take this and make it more accessible in a fashion environment and also promote the culture as an ambassador. So Ifel is an ambassador of that culture. Which makes each outlet of this retail chain an embassy, actively promoting South African designed and produced fashion. 
currently at the space, we make sure that we stock our classic lines, the Nandi in black and white, the Nandi in white and blue. But the style of the season is the Abantu style in pink, but you also have it in yellow. Um, the model, Sinead Sancha, today is wearing the pink one, and the gentleman is wearing the classic Gakas in black and white, which we have it all the time in the same color. This is a classic style. The fashion styling for the models, for me primarily, is using locally um, produced garments. We are very proudly KZN, proudly South African. We had to choose the garments that do not conflict with the style of the shoe, rather complement the style of the shoe. The Ifele shoe for me I love the most is the fact that it celebrates what we are as the Zulu culture. I love the aesthetic and most importantly, it is very, very comfortable. And I love the fact that it has evolved from the traditional style of Imba Dada to a contemporary style that appeals to the world. Perfect. Okay, guys, we've come to the end of the day. Thank you for sharing in my space and joining me today. See you soon. Creating something new, commercially successful and economically empowering from an age-old culture, that's the way forward. Still to come, David Reed makes Worcester famous for an art more typical of Venice. Jack Paro preps for a new album in a wine barrel. A home you own is a dream come true. And stand a chance of winning a top-of-the-range washing machine by answering the weekly show-related question on our social media pages and website. The more new weekly questions you answer, the greater your chance of winning. Venice is famous for its glass-blowing traditions, but Worcester, South Africa is one of the places where the new art is happening. Since he visited a glass studio age 16 and insisted on becoming an apprentice, David Reed has now become the master. Glass captivates you because it's a liquid. You are actually working a liquid. Once you start a piece, you have to finish the piece. You can work on it afterwards as we do but the essence of the piece has to be started and finished in one process. And that suits my temperament. As an artist and as a designer, I get to see what I've done one or two or three days later, and I can work on it further from there. I describe my work as how I see things, I think. I spent a year in Sweden where I enjoyed the ice and the simplicity of design, which shows in the glacier ranges. My wife and I, spent many years traveling to Namibia, to the deserts. I think there isn't a corner of Namibia we haven't visited. And that goes into the Namibian ranges of glass I do. So I think what I see, what I experience, that all gets related into the work that I try and do. I've created a team around me of assistants who help me with my pieces. And I cannot do this alone. Without their help, without their assistance, it wouldn't be possible. So. The whole thing we do here is all of us, not just one of us. This is the heart of the studio. This is our glass furnace. And in the furnace there is 300 kilos of liquid glass. And this is what we make everything that you see of my work from. This is for reheating when we work the pieces. The correct term for this is called a glory hull. The colors we use are handmade colors. Uh, we bring them in from Germany. They're made especially for glass blowers like myself. Each and every color, if I made them myself, would need a separate furnace pot. So buying them in the rod form like this, it's highly dense and we use a little bit of it to color a really large piece. So this is the way I color my glass. Once the pieces have annealed and cooled, we bring them into this part of the workshop. And this is where we do the rough cutting, the basic shaping of the pieces on the cut crystal forms. This is a diamond saw, and I will cut through the glass using the blade to give the glass the angle that I would wish it to be. 
Once the piece is rough cut with a diamond saw, we take it to the first stage, which is rough grinding. It just takes the cut marks out of the piece. Once we finish with the rough grinding, we start preparing the pieces for polishing. This process is started by Keith. He takes a series of diamond pads with a water feed and smooths the glass down to what we call a pre-polish. From there, it will go to a Zane. Zane is working with a handheld tool with cerium oxide is polishing the surface of the pieces to that diamond finish you see on a finished glacier vase. Giro is finishing the base on a flat wheel. The base has to be perfectly stable, so we use a lap wheel to finish that part. I work for 18 years with glass. In Om zo lang te werken met glas is amper zo, omdat die raak liever dat is amper zo'n baas, bij je delicaat. Van die oorafvlek het bij je makkelijk, maar die techniek is glad niet zo makkelijk niet. Kost je harde werk. Die harde spelen bij je belangrijke rol. Ik ben er maar goede oefening en harde werk. Ik ben er laat jou een goede glasblazer op de ene van die dag. At this stage, we are building up layers of glass on the color that we have created and this is building up enough material to make the size piece that I want. The blowing itself expands the glass, makes it bigger. We don't want to blow it too thin because when we take another layer, it would collapse. So it's a very controlled method of making the piece larger and giving us the shape that we need. There's going to be one more layer of glass. Then we're going to start shaping the main body of the plate. This is all done on the blowing iron. Once that shape is complete, we're going to reverse the piece. We're going to put another iron on the base, which is called the pontal, and we're going to separate it from the blowing iron, leaving us an open top. That open top, we're going to heat and shape until I'm happy with the form. Then we're going into the reheater, and we're going to warm it to the point where the plate is almost collapsing. Then I'm coming out and spinning, and it's going to open up into this open form, organic shaped platter. This is one of David's Namibian themed works. It's moment of inspiration in the desert, and each step of its evolution into art being shared with his wife Lorna. When I first met David, young and beautiful, I thought, wow, this is amazing. And his art is so amazing. And what a privilege to be in Worcester and actually be able to buy hand-blown glass for a gallery. So it started up like that. We formed a lovely relationship, discovered that we have similar birthdays, first and second of October, and so many connections and we just clicked. And we've been together ever since. We live and work together on the same premises for the last 30 years. It's amazing and we get on so well. This is where they meet the glass art loving world. The barn's an amazing place. In the beginning it was actually a wreck, had no roof, no doors, windows or anything. It was a little storeroom. David and I restored it together and turned it into an art gallery, coffee shop, the studio behind you where we blow glass and our home at the back. It was an old horse stable turned it into a two-room little cottage for ourselves. Right at the back, I have another bit of garden, which is like a farmyard. And here we are in the middle of town on a farm. So it's brilliant. Yeah. And we literally did this hands-on. It wasn't contractors and whatever. Lord and I did this with our bare hands and the help of friends. The nice thing is we also discuss artworks together and have different opinions and able to work out good designs together. And I must say, David is like Swedish artist, very clean and very particular. I come along with frilly bits and flowers and all that. So the combination sometimes works, but otherwise we do separate artworks. But, but being taken out of your comfort zone is fine now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Selling these works of wonder and light from this Cape Town studio is a dream for their son, Keenan Binnemann. The idea of the website um, for me was to make David's work accessible to the public, to not just South Africans, but worldwide. 
The whole country shares in the pride that David's most prized element in making his glass is our unique local sand. Here we have the glacier vase. It comes in many different shapes and sizes. Each piece is very unique. It actually changes color as the light hits it, whatever time of the day, and also whatever surface is put on. And then of course, this is David's most well-known piece, inspired by his travels to Scandinavia. People ask me often, how long did it take to master glass? Well, my answer is always the same. I'm still working on it. I get pieces that challenge me every single week. Something that you think might be a simple piece usually turns out to be the more difficult ones. So my answer to anybody who asks me that question is I'm still learning. Just a magnificent hour's drive from the city through the mountains of Worcester and you can visit the heart and soul of David Reed's proudly African glass creation. Just ahead, after a luxury night in a grain silo and a long soak in a barrel, Jack Parrow is ready to rap about fatherhood, songwriting the new album Family and Pizza. A Naviak at a working wine farm in the wheat country of the Swatland. This is how you toast a decade of Jack Paro. Love at first fright for some fans, an acquired taste for others. He is now an institution, and for Semmer Badenhorst of Kalmusfontein Farm, Jack would fit right in. We're in the Swartland, it's a very special area here in the Partyberg. Very chilled, very laid back, kick off the fancy shoes and the fancy clothes, kick off the boots and chill. So the, the farm, I think, dates back to early 1900s. Um, the old house building, it's quite unique. It's got such a special character and vibe, and it's got a great big back stoop. And it's just a place to chill, have pizza. It's a good vibe. The bread basket of the Cape has become serious wine country, thanks to families like that of Cornelia and Adi Badenhorst. When we moved here, there sort of a, was a half building, a silo. Most of uh, the Swatland area, the farms all have silos because they're grain farmers. So we sort of rebuild it. Top is sort of an ensuite, little romantic round room. My sister-in-law, Sema, is always on Adi's case to use a little old building for guests. And she convinced him to renovate the milk armor, the old milk room. We gathered all the old windows and doors that were lying around on the farm and the next door farm and we created a glass house with old windows and that is now the silos little outside chill area. Music to the ears of the hard gigging but home loving Jack Parrow who pulled in a little more quietly than his music does. Yeah, geez, I love this spot. I mean, this farm is amazing. I actually, weirdly enough, shot one of my music videos, um, Tia Mafanya Lead, that I do with Valen Swart up, up in the main house. Um, so I've been here before very long ago. So it's crazy how much it's changed and, and how amazing it is now. It's such a, such a special place. I've been able to do some really cool stuff uh, in my career. Uh, Coolers Echo was the first Afrikaans uh, video to get a million hits on YouTube. Uh, also the first Afrikaans uh, song to be number one on, on 5FM, which was obviously just playing English music. But yeah, I'm also very thankful that I get to play Europe a lot and I've opened for uh, and played with people like Eminem. I've been open for Snoop Dogg like four times. Like, and he was he's obviously a hero of mine as well. I've played with Prodigy. I've played with some of the biggest bands in the world. I'm just thankful, you know, a little like a kid from Belleville, like Afrikaans, kid doing Afrikaans rap. People thought I was crazy. I'm just like proudly South African, proud to actually just be able to make music worldwide, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my creative process is very much, I write 
all the time. So I, I, I'm always writing. I've got like Google Keep on my phone. I used to write in a book, but then um, I lost so many books. I, I, I was like, okay, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna never finish the album because I'm gonna lose three quarters of the lyrics. So I'm just constantly, constantly writing, even if I'm thinking of just an idea for a song. Being a father, these days his lyrics are safer for younger ears, but still as smart and funny as ever. The kind of comebacks and banter you have to grow up with. The uh, importance of family is, uh, and, and kind of working together and that kind of family mentality and is, is really important, I think, everywhere. You know, for someone like me who travels a lot and is away from their family, my, I come from a family who's very almost two, two, because I'm the young brother and I got two sisters and my mom, my dad passed away when I was younger. And um, so you can imagine, so I'm always like the one that that's like lost to talk. Like there's always someone talking over me or there's someone like telling, talking for me or something like that. So, but as much as it drives me crazy, I could, it's, it's one of the, it's like, I love it very much and I miss it when I'm away from it. And, and we do everything pretty much together all the time. Since becoming a father to his daughter, Ruby, Jack is all about following your heart into music or farming like Yvette Geyer. So this is our two resident pets, Frida and Chops. And I need to trick them every single time because they a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these are our Leghorns, Italian Leghorns and the Bosfelders, which are the born footer. What they like to do is also go and eat with the pigs, just for the fun of it. Instead of comparing egg cartons at the supermarket, Paro's favorite son used to keep his own chickens too. Um, yeah, so we, I had a chicken coop in my backyard for long. We got eggs from it, it was great. They lasted really long, about four years, five years. And then we took them to the farm and then I turned it into a bar now, as one does. Here, they have room for chickens, as well as a bar, and space for farmer and winemaker Adi Badenhorst to nurture his passion for rescuing and breeding parrots. Proceeds from wine sales even go to the Wild Bird Trust's Cape Parrot Project. This is where we take all the young birds that's hand-raised, and we take them, they graduate from in there to out here, and then they just socialize. They're very inquisitive and curious, so if you've got anything funny on you, they'll try and, and get a hold of it and play. Hi. Boop, Michael. Boop, you can also do a spot to know what they are. Since his breakthrough, Jack has diversified into writing tracks for films, TV series, and a Kwaito meets West Coast guitar anthem to unite fans behind the Springboks. A blend Adi Badenhorst would approve of. This is the seller at uh, AA Badenhorst uh, Family Wines. Uh, as you can see, it's a basic seller, so we try to work quite hard to get to get nice grapes. Uh, and then it comes into this winery. Look, I mean, I suppose we, we had a huge advantage here in the Swartland because, uh, well, the one thing is we've got very old vineyards, got some of the oldest Grenache in the country uh, standing on this farm, Sinso, which is that fantastic workhorse grape. And then Stian or Chenin Blanc is our, is our main white. So we've got two tanks like this. Uh, obviously we can't fit everything into one tank, uh, but this is just an indication of some of the grapes in here. So the juices are mixed together from the beginning. You know, so they ferment and they form this amazing, complex mixture of different kind of flavors. It was every grape has got an individual flavor and it's obviously a different ripeness. Yeah, great texture. That's what we get here in the Swartland is, uh, is this texture. You get a freshness from the soils, these granite soils. So, um, and this wine can age beautifully as well. Jack took Ari's cue to go and mellow a while in a barrel of his own. So one of my favourite things now about the winemaker's cottage is that we've got a very nice hot tub. We've got a big wine vat and it's a homemade job. You hoy a lot of wood into the, the donkey boiler on the side and it's beautiful views again over the Swartland. 
In a musical career of as many late nights in studio as on stage, Jack's become a pizza connoisseur, only to find the finest, maybe even in the world, are these. So everyone told me they made the best pizzas in the world, yeah? I actually um, had some of it already before and it is so nice. I'm gonna have to steal the recipe for the dough. We take two days to make the dough. Okay, okay. Long, cold ferments. And then we make the balls in the morning and let it rise for like a couple of hours. And then we take it out of the, out of the, the bucky. Yeah, so fluffy. It's like a little baby cloud. So the idea is you're trying to press the air to the side and then Okay, 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 okay. 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 So I'm just trying to get the air to the side a bit. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, once it's open, and then you just try and stretch it, lacquer with the midi hand. The idea is like not to hoi too much on, because then it seeks, it like goes through to the bottom of the base and it makes it soggy. But so, so just like the less is more, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've got to have some kind of fruit on there, I suppose, or vegetable. No, definitely. A little bit of cheese. But I'm going to put you my meat use... at the bottom so you don't know about it. And you're like, what's happening? And then it's like, oh my God. Yeah, this guy's vegan. <laughs> yeah. <he's> a... <laughs> so this is about, look, I mean, normally, normally you'd buy, be, cook a pizza at about 450, 500 degrees, which is the temperature inside there. Do you side. actually, so you obviously make a fire, and then did yeah. you actually, like, um, have like a little temp, like measure the temperature till it's right because I mean it's quite, it's not that easily controllable. Obviously, no, if, it's, if it's not burning, then, 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 then <laughs> yeah. the temperature's right. Then you're right. Then even... Ooh, hoo, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank God, didn't drop it. So happy. So among the 75 meats that are on this pizza. Two of them are salami and chorizo. So it's like a magic trick in your mouth. So I call it a shazami. <laughs> but this dough maker, boss. Yo, lacquer, man. Lacquer. Yeah. Mm. That looks like amazing pizza, man. Mm. It's going to go on the menu. I'm working on my new album, which I'm dropping on my uh, birthday next year, which is the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. So it's like backwards and forwards the same. It's like a whole like thing, like it's like almost like binary. Um, so I feel like it needs to be, I was gonna release it earlier, but I was like, that's too, like that number's too strong. I gotta release it then, yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's the big thing for, for, for the next few months. Um, it's just getting that done and, 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 and getting it uh, good and, and I'm really happy with the stuff we've done so far, so um, yeah, excited. For a guy headlining his own rap festival in Holland, Jack now enjoys trading a little of the craziness for some of the quietest secrets of life. And he's finding it a bargain. Right after this, like her mother wanted for her and Gail Motsopa wants for her children and grandchildren, owning the deeds to your own home is the way to build a future. Sponsored by Capitech. Simplify banking. Live better. Financial services should be affordable, accessible, simple to use, and inspired by the everyday reality of South Africans. Like mother of three, Gail Motsopa, a call center agent who has been banking with Capitech since 2010. Gail invited us to her mother's property in Soweto, which shaped her thinking about what a home is. This is the bedroom that I grew up in, actually. I used to sleep in it with three of my young sisters, so there were four of us sleeping in the same room. And by then we didn't even have a bed, so we'd sleep on the floor. Being here with my mom and my other family made me realize that a home is what you make out of it. And as much as I enjoy staying with my mom and the other family, because I already had a kid, I felt that I needed my son to enjoy what I was enjoying from my parents. That is why I ended up going out to start searching to get my own space. You just need to know what you want 
at the end of the day in terms of the property where it's concerned, what you're looking for. And because I wasn't mobile, I had to prioritize everything that I needed around me to be very close to me in terms of shops, hospitals, schools, and so forth. And making sure that the neighborhood that I'm buying in, it's safe enough for my child to grow up. And it's a place that he'll also be proud to say, I'm going home. After years of saving, a new world opened up when Gail got to buy her own two-bedroom home in Ruedepoort, giving them the foundation to build a family life. Welcome to my home. You can come through. This is the kitchen where all the magic happens, where we cook, we just make whatever comes to mind. It's an open plan. And this is the living room. This is my family here. This is where they enjoy their space, watching TV. And this right here is my older son, Maroma Lesedi, my second son. My husband here, right to the corner tabelo, enjoying his quality time with the kids. And this is the youngest of all, the naughtiest of all, Maso Honolo. Right here on my left is the bathroom. This is where I always unwind when I run away from the boys. I just like to have a me time. And ahead of me, it's the boys' bedroom. TV, it's in the room, so they always get cooked up in the room. You can even forget that they are around. They like their space. And this one here, it's the main bedroom, the boss's room. This is where I like to relax and just take a nap. What drives me most is knowing that I'm doing good for my family, taking care of my kids and looking after the household and knowing that I'm being loved by my family and coming to a very warm and loving home. The process we've had to go through to get the house was that we've had a different bank which actually approved us, but because of the interest rates, which were quite high, we then made a switch to Capitec. We sent the documents via email. They called us, which was very nice. So you'd get like callbacks in terms of them checking on you and giving you an update. And around July, that's when we got a call and an email to confirm that no, everything has been approved, everything is going as we have requested. And the best part was knowing that we've saved so much on the interest rates because it also allows us to use that other money to do some renovations with the house and be able to put more into the bond. We have been advised by Cape Tech that we can still come back and they will still assist us in terms of their renovation. There's no more documents required. There's no interest added. And the best part is we get to have our house the way we want it to be. Individuals owning their properties is how the most prosperous countries grow. And here at Capitex HQ, they're playing their part to make homes affordable and accessible. For a very long time, South Africans have expected from Capitec to deliver a home loan solution. And since I launched almost a year ago, we've really tried to simplify things and make it easy for South Africans to understand and accessible to apply. The digitally enabled process to apply for a home loan can be done from anywhere using any device. Clients can apply online in four easy steps and it takes less than five minutes. There's also no paperwork required initially and we've made it really easy and simple to understand. People can apply at Capitec not only for a new home loan, but also existing homeowners can switch their bonds to Capitec. It is our aim to make the home loan process really simple and take out all the complexities and give more South Africans the opportunity to own a property and call it their home. What I like about my home is that my family is very happy. I've got my wife, my kids. So my space is, there is no limit for me. So from where I am, I'm very happy. Switching my home loan to Capitec, it means more savings, more money to spend on renovations, and more money to spend with family in terms of doing what we do best. Our future hopes and dreams is to see the house being bigger than what it is and more renovated, and having to spend more time with the kids, and hopefully the grandkids can also enjoy the space that we are currently enjoying. If you are thinking of making a switch or looking to buy a new home, visit capitechhomeloans.co.za to apply in a quick and simple four-step online process. Start your application today and you, like Gail and her family, could save money while securing a brighter future. Get more of the Insider Essay online. 
Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.